Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 12, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands, and our scripture is 2 Peter, chapter 2. For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell in gloomy pits of darkness where they're being held until the day of judgment. And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. Later, God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and turned them into heaps of ashes. He made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people. But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. Yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. So you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment. He is especially hard on those who follow their own twisted sexual desire and who despise authority. Who is it that hasn't sung that simple children's song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands? It's got a great and comforting message about God's providential care for His creation, and it's easy to sing if you're able to carry anything close to a tune. But While generally thought a child's song, this is a jingle with the deepest of theological truths. The whole world is in his hands, for good or bad, like it or not, no matter which side of the fence you try to occupy. It is in his hands, not ours. Peter describes the punishment of sinning angels and Noah's wicked generation being covered with the flood and Lot's escape from Sodom's destruction. There's not a lot of pretty in these Old Testament images, but there is plenty of eye-opening reality about God's idea of tolerance. To be tolerant, in the biblical sense, carries with it no hint of acceptance. God never winks at sin. Tolerance is a period of second, third, twentieth, and umpteenth chances to repent and bow before our Creator. There's no scenario in which God simply overlooks our rebellion. Jesus put it in as black and white as can be expressed, Matthew chapter 10. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Now, there are plenty of people who claim, quote-unquote, acknowledgement of Jesus that they're believers, and therefore on the plus side of God's approval. But they deny the simplest understanding of what acknowledging really means, confession of sin, and then rejection of sin. You change your mind about sinning, and then you change your ways from rebellious self-pleasing to pleasing God. Knowing about God and even doing some godly things like charitable work and giving and going to church and loving your neighbor, these are all good. They're decent activities and there's no law against any of it. They're all, well, rather good. But all of that, with just one sin on your record, tips the scale in the direction of being lost, an enemy of God. Many people want to escape God's judgment for sin but they still want to hold on to their sins. Later in this passage, Peter says those people would have been better off having never been aware of the truth than to understand the truth and live a lie. This is the whole message of Scripture. God's Word shows us truth as an invitation to live truly. The whole of Genesis through Revelation is confrontation with the truth as opposed to the lie of our independence from God. Now one more thought before we head off to living on the rocky road this morning. Peter declares God will deal more harshly with those who despise God's authority and who live a life of twisted sexual practices. Without mincing words, let me describe what untwisted is. Sex only within heterosexual marriage. 
Frankly, every other kind of sexual expression is subject to punishment. And the fact is, you cannot change that, no matter how many people in America or the church want it. It didn't work in Sodom or in Noah's day, and not even for the angels who disobeyed. For you today, what you can do is change your mind and your actions. It's called repentance, and that's a prayer God is just waiting to hear. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.